One of the things that I've always wanted to do is to send MIDI data from Ableton out into a hardware synth and then have the hardware synth output go into my sound card and then be recorded into Ableton with the caveat of it actually being in time with the other elements in my Ableton project. What I found was happening was because of the latency incurred by that signal routing, my elements were out of time with everything and I'd have to resort to warping the audio, which would kind of work, but not really, and it was kind of annoying and unsatisfying to, to work with. And I've been doing it wrong for a while in terms of how to compensate for the delay, and I figured it out finally, so I'd like to share it with anyone who is currently having that same problem. So, the whole concept is that it's, it's latency that is being incurred. Like, you know, it takes time for that signal to travel out, you know, into the synthesizer, and then it takes time for that audio to pass into the sound card and be recorded into Ableton. So there's a bunch of different mechanisms that Ableton has for how to deal with that. And there's also the added bonus of recording the audio and then also monitoring the audio from within Ableton, which are different things. Um, so I'm going to show you the Ableton preferences first for a couple of numbers. So if you open up preferences and you go to your audio tab, you have all the stuff for what deals with your sound card and the latencies for your input, output, and your overall latency, and this mystical thing called driver error compensation. Now, when I first opened this up, I was like, oh, driver error compensation, that's great. I can just, you know, scroll this down until my overall latency is really low. It's going to be super awesome. No, that, that's just for software things that are having errors, like driver error compensating, not hardware or anything like that. So you don't need to touch that. Uh, it is preferable for you to have an overall lower latency, um, but if you have a mediocre sound card like me, you probably have something similar to this. So, those are some numbers that we can start off when we're trying to adjust the latency of what we're sending, but let me first talk about more about the latency and where you're compensating and why. So, there is this little D down here, which is track delay compensation, but there is audio tracks and MIDI tracks and depending on which one you're adjusting and why that acts differently. So what I was doing is I was setting my monitor to in and I was listening to what's coming out of the hardware through this monitoring. So I'm hearing the software or not hearing the hardware sense output through Ableton, monitoring it through Ableton. And doing that, there is a delay and it doesn't sound, it sounds off. So you compensate by that, for that, for that monitoring latency delay with this track delay. So you can, you know, go out up to whatever number sounds good to you and makes it sound in time. But that's just adjusting the monitoring delay. It's not actually adjusting the recording of the audio that you're getting from that software, or from that hardware synth. So, what you actually need to do is to adjust when the MIDI data that you're sending from Ableton is going to the hardware synth so that when it records it's in time. So instead of using positive track delay modulation for your, monitor, your monitored output in Ableton, you're going to compensate the MIDI track that you're sending to the hardware synth in a negative direction to send that data early so that however much latency is in your system is all evened out by the time you're actually recording. So it's a little confusing so I'll go through some examples of how to test this on your individual system because everyone's system is going to be a little bit different. My number that's like the sweet spot for me is going to be different than you so what's more important is for you to have a way to test it so that you can see where it works and, and why. So there's another sort of tricky thing about this is you need to be able to hear the hardware synth that you're working with uh, but if you turn your monitoring in off in Ableton you don't hear it through Ableton so how do you do that? Well most synths or most interfaces that have inputs on them they have a knob to mix between the input on the synth and the playback so in my sound cards case, I have two inputs, so and I have a knob that goes from input to playback. So my playback 
I turn the knob all the way to the right, it's 100% playback. That means I'm only going to hear what's happening through Ableton. If I turn the knob all the way to the left, I'm only going to be hearing what comes into the sound card. In this case, it's my MS-20. So the direct playback from the synth is, is not going to have any latency um, because it's just going to be triggered from the MIDI going in Ableton. And since that MIDI is compensated against you know the latency that you have, it'll all just work. Um, but you can't use the, the monitoring in from Ableton in this fashion. So what I do is I put the knob right in the middle. So if I need to hear and adjust like the, the hardware synth in the time that I'm recording, I can do that and still hear that signal, uh, but not have to deal with monitoring through Ableton and the, and the delay compensation, because that's just, that's just too much weirdness. So what I've got here for a test is a standard like Psytrance bass line loop with a kick drum and three notes and uh, the very common thing to put on top of that is a hi-hat, an open hi-hat at the 1.1.3. So I'm going to use the MS-20 to generate that hi-hat sound because if that hi-hat is not in time it's a very noticeable error and the groove of the the whole loop feels very off um, so and when we record we can zoom in on the waveform and see exactly where it needs to be and where it actually is and just as a test I have an operator in here with that um, with the same similar uh, patch to what I'm doing on the MS-20 I can freeze this and flatten it, and we see that indeed it starts playing stuff right at 1.1.3, very, very close. So that's what we're aiming for. Um, so I'm just going to play the loop for a second without the, without the hi-hat, and then I'll put in the hi-hat that's, uh, that's in time from software. Yeah, not super exciting or anything. Um, so I'm going to start. I'm going to record a little bit at zero, and then we're just, we're going to keep adjusting downwards um, in various increments to see what happens. So this is going to be at zero. zoom in on zero and that is obviously way off so there's a couple of values that you can use for your delay you can try these so let's let's try the overall latency 31.6 there's a couple articles on the net that suggest that you use that um, so let's try negative 31.6 and that is way too much. It got compensated way too much because we before we were after and now we're too early. So let's go back and we'll use let's say the output latency 21.8. Still too early. Okay. How about the input latency? 9.8. That's pretty close. For most things, that would probably be that would probably be enough. That would probably be close enough. But what I found, oddly enough was if I took the output latency minus the input latency, I got 12, and that seems to be just about perfect for my system. <laughs> 
that's that's pretty much dead on. It's not much of a difference from the 12. And depending on what you're recording and how tight you need it to be, or how loose you want it to be, you could add in like a couple of milliseconds of delay, and it would probably just uh, would make it sound a little less slave to the beat, a little less quantized. So if you want a little bit of swing in there, you can add it like that. But yeah, this is uh, definitely the way that you can see repeatable results as to exactly where your signal is in terms of its timing and how to compensate for the, for the delay and all that good stuff. So I hope this was instructive and yeah, cheers.